them. Shortly after 11 o'clock, Kate and her mother heard the engine chugging slowly down the tracks. The, before the express came through, they were heading toward the bridge over Honey Creek. Suddenly, the engine's bell rang wildly. Then Kate heard a terrible crack. She knew at once the bridge had broken. Kate heard the hot engine hiss as it hit the cold water. She jumped to her feet. Oh, mother, she cried. They've gone down in Honey Creek. I must go help. The crash woke the children. They watched silently as Kate pulled on a jacket and an old straw hat. Then she lit her father's railroad lantern. You can't go, Kate, her mother said. It's too dangerous. I have to, mother, Kate answered. Someone may still be alive in Honey Creek, and I must stop the express before midnight. Please, Kate, her mother cried, don't go. The floodwaters are almost at our door. If that were father down there, wouldn't you want someone to help him? Kate asked. Oh, you're right, her mother agreed. Go ahead, but be careful. We'll be praying for you. Kate could not cross the flooded yard to get to the broken bridge. Instead, she started a, up a path behind her house. She would reach the tracks where they ran through the hills. Water poured down the hillside. Kate climbed over fallen trees. Her skirt got caught on wet brambles. Her shoes sunk in the mud. But she held her father's lantern before her and kept going. At last, she reached the tracks. And that's another good uh, stopping place. So um, a few comments for our uh, viewers. The comments being that uh, even in a native language, when you're reading something, once in a while, you might mispronounce some words. And if you're working on a second language, this is certainly going to happen. You're going to mispronounce some words, and sometimes the words just aren't going to come out right. Well, that's all right. The, the, the thing to, uh, to ask yourself is, am I following the story? Is this getting in the way of my enjoying the story? And a lot of times, it's not. So give yourself a break. You know, if, if you're reading, it's not about pronouncing 100% of the words correctly. It's about engaging in the story. And uh, this is a, a very good story to be engaged with. So words are your guides to understanding a story, but it's the story that makes the reading worthwhile. So in reading in your target language, if you're enjoying the story, keep enjoying it. Also notice that we're using illustrations from the book. This fantastic illustration set can further help you follow what's going on. Now make some predictions. What do you think will happen next? Start with what you know about the story. We helped you through that uh, with some of our audience members. Think about what kind of character Kate Shelley is. What do you think she'll do in the next part of the story? Let's listen to Will as he reads on with Kate Shelley and the Midnight Express. All right, let's get to it. Kate ran along the tracks, back to the broken bridge. Wait, did I skip a page? Nope. Kate ran along the tracks, back to the broken bridge. She looked out over the dark waters of Honey Creek. She could not see the engine or any crew. Had they all drowned? S suddenly, she heard a shout in the roar of the storm. She was not sure. She listened again. Yes, someone was calling. Lightning flashed. Kate saw someone holding on to the branches of a treetop just above the water. Thunder boomed. As it faded, Kate heard voices calling again. She couldn't, couldn't make up. She could hear two men's voices now, but she couldn't make out their words. 
above the howl of the storm. Hang on! Hang on! Kate shouted. I'll get help! Kate swung the lantern back and forth. Now the men would know she had heard them and was going for help. Kate began to run toward Moingona Station. There wasn't much time. She had to reach the station before midnight, before the express. Kate ran along tracks, even before she reached the Des Moines River Bridge. She could hear the rush of flood water. She held up the lantern to light her way over the bridge. But as she did, the fierce wind blew out the lantern's small flame. Kate stared into the darkness. To reach the Moingona station, she had to cross the river. The long wooden bridge stretched before her. Beside the tracks was a narrow walkway. Some of its boards were missing. There was no handrail to hold. Kate was afraid to cross this bridge, even in daylight. Could she do it? Now, in the storm, in the dark? Kate thought of the men in Honey Creek. She thought of all the people on the train speeding toward the broken bridge. She got down on her hands and knees and began to crawl across. Kate felt for gaps in the walkway, so she would not fall through. Nails and splinters cut her hands and knees and tore her skirt. She grasped the steel rail of the track to keep the wind from sweeping her over the edge. Trees and logs in the flood, flooded river crashed against the bridge, making it shake. When she reached the middle of the bridge, great flashes of lightning suddenly lit the night. She looked up. A huge tree was coming down the river, straight toward her. Surely it would crash through the bridge. Kate closed her eyes and prayed. I don't know about you, but I can hardly wait to see what happens next. And we'll get to see that when we return right after this. <laughs> 